Hey everyone, so yesterday I flew the English Channel using IFR, um, that's Instrument Flight Rules, in a Cessna 172, tied to the autopilot, it was all real fancy with lots of switches and buttons and math and all sorts of fun stuff, but today what we're going to do is something a little different. We're going to take a step into a time machine and realize the roots of aviation. So all that stuff is really fancy, but you got to remember, like all that stuff that I did yesterday was really fancy, but that's over a hundred years of aviation, and we're only really skimming the surface of what is in, what was involved in that, uh, in terms of the science and the technology behind aviation. But in 1909, the Daily what was it called the Daily Mail had a contest. This was 1909 to see who could cross the English Channel first in a heavier-than-air aircraft. The only the only thing that's ever really crossed the channel, obviously other than boats, were like helium balloons, so lighter than air, um, manned and unmanned. But this was a contest heavier than air aircraft, manned heavier than air. And they, they offered, this was in 1908, they offered 500 pounds to the first person who can do it. Well, nobody was really biting. So in 1909, they increased the prize purse to 1,000 pounds. And sure enough, that got some people interested. Um, I mean, in the early 1900s, there was a lot of, like, interest in... Uh, there was a lot of celebrityism in flight. Like the Wright brothers and what was happening in America and everything. So this guy right here, Louis Below, Blorot, Blorot, Blorot. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of French names, so if I butcher them, I'm really sorry. This guy decided he was going to try it. And he was going to, his plan was to basically take off somewhere west of Calais and fly northwest to Dover. That is the shortest portion of the English Channel. And he did it. He actually succeeded in a Blorot 11. This is it right here. Look at this guy. Pure wooden airframe, canvas, and I think the motor, it's like a... 25 horsepower motor, it can go a maximum speed of 41 knots. He did it without a compass, without any navigational aids except for a boat on the ground telling him where he should go because there was a passenger boat crossing the channel at the time. Um, and he was able to get to Dover without anything. He didn't even have a compass, which is, which is mind-blowing because you can't see across the English Channel on a good day. So, he completed it in 1909, July 25th, and he took off at 4.41 a.m. And what we're going to do today is we're going to recreate that flight. I found a Burr, a Blaro 11 uh, to actually download for FSX. I was amazed that I could find that. I basically decided, they said that he started his flight between Calais, which is here, and San Gate, um, so on a beach. So I pretty much put our airplane basically right here and my my plan is we're going to try to fly to Dover at uh, at four what time did I say at about four in the morning um, on July 25th 1909 we're going to try to recreate the weather conditions there's not a lot of information about the weather other than it says um, that it was clear skies that's why he decided to do the flight it was clear skies but when he got to Dover um, the wind really picked up, and he actually he actually kind of crash landed. This is actually a picture of his landing. He actually kind of crash landed in uh, in Dover, um, but he still did it. So good on him. So like I said, we're gonna recreate those conditions, and I'm not gonna use any navigation, zero, except for obviously the sun. We're gonna take a look at some maps before we get started, um, but we're gonna do this old school style. And even though I'm not a professional pilot or anything like that, but so. <laughs> Immediately you start to think, like, how am I going to nav myself from Calais to Dover? And the, the immediate answer is the sun. The sun rises in the east, so always keep, uh, pretty much always keep the sun off, like, to the, a little bit behind my right wing, and I should be fine. And if I want to look straight ahead, I pick a star. I'm going to pick a star, and I'm just going to follow that star, because it'll be still sunrise. You'll still be able to more or less see the stars in FSX until... Maybe 6 o'clock, maybe 5.30. Um, we're going to pick a star and we're just going to follow that star and hope to God we get to Dover in time. So this is our FSX setup. 
This is me. We'll unpause this simulation now. This is me in the Berlo Berlot. Let me just get my notes here. Um, how do I get out of this full screen? Exit full screen. This is me in the Berlot 11. Um, I've already set up my easy dock views. Oh, sounds like the engine has started. Anyway, that's that's no big deal. This is the Berlot 7. You can kind of see it here. Um, I've set up some cockpit views, just two, basically the cockpit view like this, and then just kind of looking forward. Um, if we go to World, Time and Season, you can see that I've set it up for 4.42 a.m. July 1909 on the 21st. It's a Wednesday. And in terms of weather conditions, I'm not entirely familiar with uh, FSX's weather, but I've set up some custom weather stuff. Um, so if we go to Customize, we can see that in this weather station, um, visibility is unlimited, clouds few, no wind speed. But as we get closer to Dover, I've set up some crazy wind conditions. So at this weather station, we're going to have moderate winds, the visibility will be in half. And at this weather station, um, the winds will be a little bit lighter, but the visibility will be unlimited. I don't know if it's really going to make a difference, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see. So we're going to unpause this again. Oh, it's already unpaused. Um, so again, if we take a look around, that's the sun rising there. And we're just basically sitting on the beach between Calais and Sagate. So I'm going to, my approach is to just fly straight, get the sun off my right wing, and just continue off to Dover. And hopefully I can make it. And I should also say that I'm not going to be flying with, like, Yesterday I used FS Commander. I don't have S FS Commander running on any of my monitors. I have it open just to track so that when I maximize it again, I just have it minimized. Just to track so we can look at it later to kind of see my path. But I'm not going to look at any of that stuff. You're just going to have to trust me. Um, we're going to see if we can make it just flying by the sun. So we're going to start this guy up. And again, this guy only goes for 41 knots. Um... If you remember yesterday in my Cessna 172, we were rotating at 60 knots. So I'm going to have to rotate pretty early. I'm actually a little worried about hitting those uh, houses right in front of me and maybe that tree. And we're going to try to fly at about 200 feet, which is kind of what he did. And he maintained 41 knots. Um, I did fly this earlier yesterday, and I actually overstressed the airframe and crashed. Um, because I was doing like a whole bunch of crazy turns, but... Anyway, let's give this shot. Vive la France. He won. I might not. We'll see. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this thing. So we're just going to try to get some altitude before I even attempt a turn. Oh my god. This thing is so slow. Oh jeez. I didn't even run into anything. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. <coughs> well, we're off to a good start, clearly. It's That was the clipping in FSX. Thought there was a tree there, and clearly there wasn't. So I'll remember that for this time. Flights, load, and 1909. Let's set up my view. Alright, so we'll unpause that guy. Alright, full throttle, and we'll try to... Oh, we should start the engine first. That'll help. Full throttle, and we'll try to rudder away from those houses. Like, I don't even know if this thing had rudder back in the day, but we're going to pretend it does. I doubt it does. I mean, look at this. It's just like a wheel on a stick. That's basically a joystick. Alright, let's take off. I don't even know what the what speed I'm going at, or if I should at least be rotating at this point. Oh god, that's a really tall tree. Let's try to pull just a little right, but you should never turn in the middle of a takeoff. You should try to get to your cruising speed before doing anything. These wings are really long, too. 
Like, they're a lot longer than you think. Well, at least I cleared the tree line this time. I also turned, um, air traffic to none, because there wasn't a lot of air traffic in 1909. But I really, like, increased the, uh, boat traffic, so it's not that boring to watch. I mean, it'll still be pretty boring to watch, but there'll be a lot of boats to look at. Alright, so I'm going to guess that's about 200 feet, so we'll start rolling right. Nick says, I think you turn the wheel for rudder. That would actually kind of make sense. Alright. Oh, is that land over there? Oh shit, that might be land. Well, we're going to go with my plan. Okay. Sun's off to my right, and I think I'm a little bit... I should, it should be probably a little bit behind my right wing. There. This is what we're going to do. We're going to fly like this. The sun's going to always try to be at this... Um, yeah, he's, Nick is saying sun just over my right shoulder, not in line with your plane's right wing. So yeah, this is over my right shoulder. Oh, I'm kind of steering a little right. So see if we can find any... See, I can actually see the, the land. That's not fair. It's not fair at all. Let's 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 make a change here. This isn't fair. We're gonna end this flight. I feel bad. Let's go load. Well, 1909. We'll we'll decrease the visibility just a little bit. Nick says you can easily sail over the channel on a clear day. So. I feel bad. It's, it feels like cheating. Let's reset our view. So we'll set weather at customize at this station. I don't know if this will actually do anything. We'll just lower the visibility a little bit. How many miles is this? Is there a way you can get, like, a ruler? How many miles is it across the channel at the shortest distance? Let's see if that makes a difference. 20 miles? Let's switch over back to Google Maps. See what Google Maps can tell us. So, this is 5 kilometers. That's about 10 kilometers. 20 kilometers. So, it's about... I'd say it's about 30 or... 30 or 40 kilometers at its shortest point, so 30 kilometers to miles, 18 miles, give or take. So if we'll switch back to this, we'll just lower this just a little bit, maybe 15 miles if I can get it at that. Well, 10 miles is fine. Visibility, 10 miles. All right, let's try that. Because I, I feel cheap. I feel like I'm cheating. All right, that looks a little bit better. All right, let's start this guy up. Well, it's actually... Sorry about that, guys. I didn't think it would be that clear. All right, full throttle, and again, we're gonna rudder right. I wonder if the rudder, no. A lot of the stuff isn't modeled. I don't even know how the throttle works on this thing. really bouncing in the sand. Let's just get some altitude here. So, below... Blorot, Blorot had an advantage that I don't have. When he was crossing the channel, um, basically a passenger ship went with him, and that's where kind of like the media of the time, they were all on that ship. And he basically followed that ship's path. It was kind of like his guiding vector. He followed that ship's path to Dover, but eventually he overtook it. And at one point, he was, um, what he said, he was alone in the middle of the English Channel for about 10 minutes, he said. 
and he said he was quoted saying it was the most isolated he ever felt. And I was thinking about that, and I remember reading, you know, a long time ago about what is what is the actual most isolated person? What was in history the most isolated person ever? And it was actually during the Apollo moon landings when the commander of the module would stay back and then the guys would go land on the on the moon and that person is still to this day the most isolated in the history of mankind the most isolated person from the rest of civilization and um and i was thinking you know today that like that must have felt really surreal in 1909 feeling that isolated when you're just crossing you know a, a 30 kilometer channel I mean in these days God in these days if somebody were to attempt this now they'd have an iPhone out and they'd be twitch streaming the whole thing <laughs> so I guess what I'm getting at is it's amazing how much of a difference isolation is between 1909 and 1960 I'm getting a little high So I can actually see the landmass kind of drawing. Look at that. It's a really interesting airframe, actually. The wings uh, are really thick. So again, no navigational aids except for the sun, and I don't, I can't actually see any stars now because of the visibility, but just keep that sun off to my little, like, right shoulder, basically, not right wing, and we should reach Dover in no time. And then I gotta find a suitable place to land without crashing. It's also really crazy that Blarot when he was crossing the English Channel, he basically met the coastline and flew up and down the coastline until he found his buddy, who was waiting for him over in England, waving a red flag. And I'm just like, can you imagine what that felt like? Like, just... Like, you couldn't call him. You couldn't pre-designate a time. You couldn't do any of that. You just... You just had to find him. And again, nowadays, we, we freak out because, you know, we're at the mall and we have to set all these pre-designated locations and if you split up with your family, you have to have a meeting point. Blorot was like a man's man. He had balls the size of... Basketballs. I'm not using trim either because I don't know if this aircraft has any trim, so I'm really kind of fighting the aircraft with a stick. Normally, I'd have my hands off the uh, hands off the stick. Should have set a view that like just basically is like my sun view. <laughs> I guess I can. Can I use that? No, not really. Oop. Getting a little unlevel. Pretty neat looking airplane though. I know you're over there, England. Just a matter of when. So, the flight took him, like I said, 34 minutes. I didn't really document what time I actually took off. I guess I could check the real world time. But I'm assuming Blorot had a watch. Or a pocket watch. I mean, he certainly didn't have an iPhone. Like I just checked, but... <coughs> he, he at least probably had a watch. So it's... In real time, it's 5... 
17 p.m. right now, so... And he was an engineer, so I'm sure he was smart enough to at least calculate how long it would take him. Getting a little off course, Just come a little bit right. So if you want to fly this aircraft, you can. It's free. You can download it. Just look up the Bl Blorot 11. It's on some FSX website. And I'm also using EasyDock, which is not free for camera transitions. You have to pay for that. Running the water is Rex. Also Payware. You have to pay for that. <coughs> um, I'm using Orbix. England as well, which won't really make a difference, we're going to land as soon as we find a place, but those are all the add-ons I'm using. Water looks really nice though. When that Once that sun kind of breaches and starts kissing the water, it'll look really nice. So the rules of the contest, I don't know if I said this, but the rules of the contest said you had to do it between sunrise and sunset. So I guess they didn't want any night flying for whatever reason. Um, I don't really know the motivation behind that. But I think the rules didn't necessarily say you couldn't use a compass. I mean, that's just really ballsy. You just don't take a compass? That's kind of messed up. I keep thinking I see land, but then it feels like it's just like a mirage. It's actually a really scary place to, uh, to cross the channel from, because if you go a little too far east, you will fly straight up, like pretty much north, you'll fly like straight up the channel, the English channel and not see land god until <laughs> you hit Antarctica basically um, and if you come a little left then you're gonna fly really far you'll still hit England but like we'll see if I can show you what I mean real quick so if you try if you basically fly from here and come a little too far north, you're gonna fly basically just like this. You're gonna miss all of England. And if you fly here and come a little too west, you're gonna make your trip probably twice as long. And there's only like a really small margin. Check my... Oh, I'm way off. <laughs> there's only really a small margin of error. And I might have just breached that margin of error. Okay, let's see how that looks like now. That's a little better. So yeah, we're keeping an eye out for land. Somebody's asking if I read Twitch comments. I do not read Twitch comments. Sorry. 
I'm not used to people watching me on Twitch, I just use Twitch as a stream. So if there's people watching me, then, uh... On Twitch. I apologize. Maybe Nick can respond to some of the comments. Because Nick is kind of my co-pilot. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that's land. Let's see if we can at least see France. Nope, we're pretty much isolated. We're isolated in the middle of the English Channel. Oh, no, there's some land mass. Check my yeah, still pretty on a on a pretty good approach. <laughs> Brandon wants me to do a barrel roll. I'm not gonna do that. I will break this plane. I will 100% break this plane. I was like I said, I was flying it earlier at full throttle, and I stressed the airframe. So I'm not running at full throttle right now because I'm worried that I'm gonna stress the airframe and crash and break up the plane. There's no way this thing can handle a barrel roll. There's no way this thing can even handle, like, a 20-degree climb. <laughs> yeah, it, it, what Nick said, it's like flying a chair. <laughs> That's what it is. It's like flying a peach basket, sitting in a peach basket. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's land, but I've been saying that forever at this point. Brandon wants me to do all this fancy stuff, but this is like a canvas wooden airplane. It can fly straight, and that's about it. So that's the end of that. <laughs> and sometimes turn, and maybe land. God, this would be boring and nerve-wracking. Like, again, if somebody were to do this today, they would bring, like, an iPod or something with music on it. I bet he was damn cold. Well, it was July, so... Probably wasn't that cold, but the wind... Yeah, that's definitely... Gotta be a landmass over there. So you see here... You see here how... I, I think this is a landmass. And see how it kind of ends right here? If we go back to my map... I think that's this landmass ending right here. So we'll go back to the view. So... I mean, I'm going to wait till I see land first before I make any deviation, but if I hit here, I want to come a little bit left, I think, to hit Dover. Just a little bit, not too much. And I'm going to turn a little bit more right. But again, I'm flying with no navigational aid. I mean, I, I have the map of the English Channel next to me, but so did uh, Berlo. Blorot. I keep saying Berlo. For Blorot, and he likely looked at a map before he took off, so. Nix thinks I'm already further west than I should be.
I don't know what you mean by that, Nick. <laughs> Are you judging my piloting skills? That's definitely landmass, so at least we're not going to get lost. Oh, he's saying I drifted left. I know I for sure did. But basically at this point I'm just <coughs> I'm just aiming for the biggest landmass, the largest landmass which is over here. And I'd rather be further west than further east because if I'm too far east, I'm going to miss all of Britain. So I'm a little okay with being too far west. Sorry about that, guys. Oh. I'm getting all screwed up. Yeah. So we're approaching land, so yay, we at least... I think I'm getting a little high, too. This is definitely higher than 200 feet. Just come a little down. Because we're going to have to start finding a suitable landing strip. I'm really playing with the wind now. Isn't there a song called The Cliffs of Dover? Is that a song? Oh, sorry guys. Because if there are cliffs of Dover, I can probably just try to find those. Oh, Nick linked it. <laughs> I didn't know that was the YouTube thing you uh, linked. So the sun's just starting to kiss the water. So, I think my assumption was correct. This is... Let's see if I can figure this out, because I'm in full screen mode on that. So, we'll go back to this view. So, that's the end. So, Dover is just a little bit left of that. So, we'll go back to FSX. Sorry, it's hard to do all that stuff with a mouse. I don't really care about the sun anymore. Alright, I gotta keep level. So this might be Dover, maybe? Maybe here. This is what we're gonna aim for. And we'll move up in our cockpit a little bit so we can see a little better. So we're gonna try to find a suitable landing spot beyond this, once we get there. Hey, you don't see cruise ships very often in 
So we're going to start picking up a lot of wind, I think. Um, because I'm going to hit that weather station shortly. God, imagine if Florot could see us now. <laughs> Nick says the Titanic is being built around about now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, there wasn't uh, an FSX... <laughs> there wasn't an FSX ship 1909 pack. <laughs> Or scenery 1909 back for that matter. Oh, those cliffs are coming into view. Those must be the cliffs of Dover that everybody says. Here, let's see what this link is that Nick sent me. Hopefully I don't get flagged on YouTube for playing it. I'll turn it a little down. Oh yeah, Nick has a fun fact. Um, yeah, like he said, the only reason that Blorot crossed the cliffs of, or cl crossed the English Channel was because of the start of that month, of July, of this month that we're flying in, his wife saved some guy's ch child or something, and they gave her a bunch of money to say thanks, so otherwise he would have gone bankrupt. And actually, because he crossed the English Channel, he, uh... He was able to start an aeronautics company, and he built a whole bunch of planes for World War I, based off of this design, the Blarat 11, and uh, continued to create planes and fly and all sorts of crazy stuff. This is definitely the Clips of Dover. So we're definitely going to Dover. I didn't even think of the cliffs. That's a really good landmark to figure out where you are. I, I'm sure he used it. Oh, I'm definitely going to check the map when we land. Faux show. But this has got to be the Cliffs of Dover. There's nothing else. Oh, maybe over there? There's, no, there's more Cliffs over there. Well, if I crash and burn during the landing, I'm not going to retry it, but... This has been an interesting experience. Look, the sun's up now. And 
and we're really starting to pick up some wind. And I guess, um, Blarot, he had to circle a couple times to find a, cir a suitable landing space. Um, because where the flag really was, it was kind of like just on a hillside, and it's really hard to land in a hill. I'm going to try to find a farm or something to land in. But again, keep in mind that Dover is probably much larger now in FSX than it ever was in 1909, so... I don't know if you're lying or not, Nick. <laughs> I don't know if I should read what you said. I don't know if you just made that up. <laughs> well, I should read it now, but I don't know if it's true or not, because now all the viewers are like, what do you say? Nick says, legend has it that some light drizzle as he approached <laughs> light drizzle as he approached a cliff saved saved his engine from overheating oh he did read it on wikipedia i mean it could be wrong but <coughs> i thought you just made that up that's fucking crazy this is actually a pretty nice view that must be dover over there like the port of dover look at all those cruise ships oh there's that visibility that i programmed Oh, oh god. We're gonna hit a lot of wind now. We're gonna hit a lot of wind. <laughs> Nick says, Legend also has it that the chair of his plane was made, was belonged to his great grandmother, great 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 grandmother who was Chechen and spoke... Oh, you made that shit up! <laughs> That's from a movie we watched earlier. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so now we're going to start looking for a landing spot, but I'm fighting a lot of wind at this point. So we're just going to throttle down a little bit. And I guess he killed the engine mid-flight, like as he was trying to find a landing spot and just kind of glided in circles um, until he touched down. And I, he might have touched down at like 35 knots or something like that. But when he did land, he did crash land. Um, the whole bottom of the plane dropped out, or I guess popped up from the force of the landing. So we're going to see if we can do any better. Alright, so let's try to find a spot. That that actually looks like a spot, like right here. This looks like a long, nice strip. So let's let's get on a like somewhat of an approach. Oh god, I gotta get some more throttle if I wanna make that. Not too hard on the turns. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god, there's trees there. Alright, here we go. Let's try to straighten her out. Find a nice... straight spot. And we'll actually throttle all the way back. Try to give it a little bit of flare. Oh, we're really drifting. Oh god. Oh, nice! <laughs> I can't believe I landed it. Alright. So, we're here. Look at that. We made it, so let's kill this engine, if we can. Um... Actually, I don't have... There we go. Killed the engine. I should have killed the engine mid-flight, like he did. But, uh... We made it. Nix says, check my tail. Tail looks good. Everything looks good, actually. I did a better landing than... 
Blarat, but granted he wasn't flying a simulator. Okay, so let's see where we are. Let's see where we actually made it. So we'll click map here. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm right by the Dover VOR. <laughs> Look at this flight. This is probably the most perfect flight that, like, I could have taken. Like, the most perfect path. How do I move this? I think, oh yeah, it's these weird arrows. Wow! That is an amazing flight. Like, dead on. Dover is just, like, this is the port of Dover, but we made it right to Dover. Wow. I can't believe we did that. That was really amazing. That was quite the flight. It was really fun, too. Um, the sun's just coming up. Let's see what time it is, actually. Flights. Um, we'll go time and season. So right now it's 5.13. We took off at, what was it, 4.41. So we almost made the exact same time that... Uh, actually, does it say what time he landed? Let's take a look. So if we go to... English Channel Crossing... He landed. Flight took 36 minutes. So if the flight took 36 minutes and he took off at 4:41, then 21 minutes would be 5:01, 5:11. Close. I actually made better time than he did <laughs> by three minutes or by four minutes. <laughs> More or less, if my quick map in my head is right. Which is probably really embarrassing if I got it wrong. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, this is kind of a cool flight. And we'll see you guys during the next flight.